Welcome to the Young and the Wrestlers, the Pop Culture's WWE podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Betson, and this episode, the Smackdown in Review, comes to you every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to facebook.com slash groups slash the Pop Culturist, Discord, Twitter, all those links are in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to patreon.com slash the Pop Culturist. Uh, support us at any dollar value get yourself a nice little sneaky link where you can watch us record this show live like a couple people are right now but if you uh, want to support us in more one-off fashion head over to the popculturist.com slash shop where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it and we are also on a twitch at twitch.tv slash the pop now as we, as always this the the days have changed for the streams they are now on thursdays that's thursday 8 p.m but uh with the release of wwe 2k20 tonight when today's episode to go lot goes live i will do my best to stream this to stream some 2k20 tonight uh now we do have so i'm picking up the, the collector's edition tomorrow morning uh, i received a, a parcel today i have to go pick it up from the post office i don't know what it is all i know is it's possibly from 2k so it could be something wrestling related there as well so we might be able to do a little sneaky uh, extra extra bit of unboxing there as well bunch of cool stuff happening ahead of release of 2k20 uh we talk about 2k20 in this week's episode of uh, of uh the for the players the pop culture's position podcast we talk about uh how it looks kind of rough right now but we also dive into why that is the case so rather than just being like that game looks poo we break it down a little bit as to why uh other general housekeeping this week is wwe live uh, so Gemini Wednesday afternoon are off to the Rod Laver Arena to see uh, the SmackDown house shows, which should be exciting, seeing as this is a SmackDown episode. Very cool. Bunch of cool stuff happening at that show. And one thing that we have mentioned on the social medias, on behalf of Well Played, we have been invited to go and interview the former WWE champion, the six-time tag team champion, Kofi kingston that's right thanks to thanks to zach specifically for making this happen uh we're rep we're there like we're kind of freelancing i guess we're there representing the young and the wrestlers but as well as well played and we'll be there having a chat to him about uh about just the wrestling life so very excited very cool I'm, i i uh I marked out a little bit at work um had a little bit of like my heart so that's very very cool so we'll get to go have a chat with kofi It'll be very very nice uh, i'm not sure who else is there but as of right as it stands right now we are scheduled to just meet with him uh but for those of you that are in the city tomorrow night uh went tomorrow night for the wrestling if you head over to eb games between 3 30 and 5 30 yes buddy oh thank you very much thanks buddy i'll make sure to put them on so my son brought my apple watch and my ring for me because he's nice um yeah, so if you happen to be in this in the Melbourne City area on Wednesday afternoon, head over to EB Games Swanson Street, where you might, you'll get a chance to meet and greet with Charlotte Flair. Uh, if you have a copy of 2K20, she will sign it, and that's kind of what the whole the thing is there. So it's there with 2K20. Um, obviously, we, we, so that's the same time that we're off uh, visiting Kofi, having a chat with him. So sadly, those things don't quite line up for us. So I would love to have gone to, to, to Swanson and meet Charlotte Flair as well, even if it's just for a glancing thing. Um, but I think Kofi is totally a good pickup there for us. So um, big thank you to Zach and the team at Well Played. Um, we'll do our best to represent you as well as us in that wrestling chats. <sighs> Have I been this week? I've been all right. Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it's, I've been too bad. I've been very exciting. Um, this is wrestling week. So this is it's very very cool. It's very huge. Two K twenty, even though it does, I said does it quite rough. I am still keen to check it out. Um, mostly because I'm a giant mark, and that makes it super easy. Uh, when you are a mark, things get excited. Uh, no, I, I think the bones may be okay. Like if the if the gameplay is tight, then it's not going to be a problem. Uh, I'm willing to give uh, uh, the benefit of the doubt to visual concepts, um, as uh, Ukes, the uh, previous head developer of, two, of WWE2K, uh, they they were using a proprietary engine that they built, the UX engine. So when they uh, left the project, they then took the whole engine with them. So the difficulty that they're facing uh, at visual concepts is they had to build it all from scratch they didn't have 10 years of working on it so it's a little bit janky um but 
this is the problem with annual, with annualized cycles, annualized release cycles, as in there was no time for them to stop. There was no time for them to delay. There was no, like the only option was to skip this year and then they'd have to come back next year. And I think they could have go away with it if they did. Um, they may have missed the boat on the women's revolution stuff, which is a bummer, but I think it, they would have handled it better if they took a year and really focused on delivering a better game. But I, I do hope that there is some patches as they move into the future. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> work on it a little bit next year. So as of yet, I haven't played it. Um, it's Monday. Uh, I said that the, pa- the package that came in the mail today may have been it. <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll find out when I pick it up tomorrow morning. Anywho, let's get into the show. So this is our SmackDown show. As we mentioned, SmackDown shows come to you on Tuesdays. Uh, Raw comes to you on Thursday mornings which is very, very cool. Uh, it will be delayed this week. It will be a Friday this week uh, as we are at WB Live on the Wednesday night. So it's a little bit difficult for us to record a show when we're actually at a show. This week's episode of SmackDown took place in Indianapolis, Indiana, I believe, and it kicked straight off. There was no fucking around this week. It went straight into it. Intercontinental Championship match. Roman Reigns versus Shinsuke Nakamura with Sami Zayn, and Sami Zayn did, in fact, join on commentary. This was interesting for me straight off the bat like before we even get to the actual match itself i was very excited i'm like holy shit you know like ro- like they're not gonna have roman lose like, like, like he can't although it'd be amazing to put over shinsuke like that I, I do i did wonder like roman has successfully won a ton of times over my, of many many opponents so i did wonder how he would go against the shins and shinsuke but knowing that Sami Zayn was ringside and as the the manager that he is uh i did expect there to be some interference and probably that would likely cost the win um saying that though because there's been a lot of discussion around how roman isn't interested in the championships and he means that as in like the big ones like universal or the WWE heavyweight um but that's to say that he can't go for a mid-card belt. I think the general populace would be pretty excited or be pretty happy to deal with uh, a Roman that has a mid-card belt. I think that's probably okay. Uh, I was certainly excited for it. I was certainly hoping for it. Um, knowing that there was the SmackDown before them coming to Australia, I was like, holy shit, this is going to be awesome. We'll get, like Roman Reigns is going to be there anyway, but we would get Roman Reigns and Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship uh, Roman Reigns. Win! And it would be cool because it's that slow burn to getting him back into the main event picture. So, big fan of that. Um, of course, Sami Zayn does interfere. Uh, as, as, as predicted, there was a situation there where Roman Reigns did have a bit of bleeding from his mouth. So, it was a little bit, a bit of bussy punch punch, which, is, which was cool. Um, and impressively, Nakamura did hold up his own. Now, I'm still not o- uh, one over by uh nakamura uh he's still okay i I, he's still weird gangly looking dude and i think because of his style like the strong style is just uh not quite my enjoyment for wrestling uh because i think that that, because i really i enjoy new japan but i just don't watch it um i don't know what it is but maybe there's some bleed over there from his time in new japan that's not really winning it for me. Uh, however, he did, in fact, counter a Superman punch uh, by getting into a tri- triangle armbar, which is very, very cool. Uh, but the actual interference that cost the match wasn't at the hands of Sami Zayn. It was, in fact, King Corbin. So King Corbin comes in and attacks Reigns over the corner uh, w- with his little uh, King Scepter. Uh, King Corbin. At, so the the reasoning here is that uh, Roman Reigns will would be would be paying back uh, what The Rock did to him last week, week before two weeks ago at SmackDown premiere. Um, that's I guess it makes sense, I suppose. Uh, so this did cause the DQ, which uh, then obviously gets the win to Roman. However, he doesn't get the belt. You can't win on the DQ. Um, he made because hence of champions advantage. I guess if they have a rematch and and Roman wins by DQ or clean, uh, I guess I get the belt in the next one, and they decide to do it again. <sighs> Excuse me. So after causing the DQ, uh, uh, Corbin does uh, engage, get, and able to get him in a deep six, goes for the drop. Uh, then Daniel Bryan comes fucking legging it in, uh, comes in to help out. 
Uh, but Sam, so he, he's getting ready to, rock, to get ready to play the role, but Sammy does get his leg, uh, and then Shinsuke drops the Kinshasa on Daniel Bryan. So this is a couple of things here that are really cool. A, it's still, you know, we're, we are seeing that change in Daniel Bryan. Uh, he's company, I wouldn't say he's quite, quite face yet, but he's, he's heading in that direction. Uh, he's coming to the aid of Roman Reigns, one of the biggest faces in WWE, um, which is cool which is fine, uh, and knowing that, once again, once again I, I'm not, I know there are only house shows here, but it's, it's cool for us to, in terms of storytelling to watch here at WWE, uh, here in Australia, sorry. So, like, we're gonna we're getting a cage match between Roman, Daniel Bryan, uh, teaming up against Eric and Rowan, so storyline still stays intact there. So excited to see that. Makes me very happy. Where'd my all go? There it is. Uh, next up, we did get the New Day. They were singing backstage and just piss farting around. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, and then Tucky from Heavy Machinery comes in, drops a picnic table right in front of them and talks about the tag team turmoil match that will be taking, uh, taking place at Crown Jewel. Uh, so at Crown Jewel, they're having the tag team turmoil match, which is a, essentially an elim- elimination match. However, for tag teams, uh, so the teams are... There's so Heavy Machinery's in it, the New Day in it, B-Team... The OC, it's like eight teams, I think. I can't remember them off the top of my head because I'm a dingus. Uh, but someone in the chat, if you can pull up the eight teams that are involved in the tag turmoil match, it'd be awesome. Uh, so Heavy Machinery come out and say, look, you know, we do have that match coming up at Crown Jewel. But, uh, yeah, because that was fight for Crown Jewel. Uh, yeah, was, but at this very moment in time, we are friends. They're, you know, we're, we're very similar. We're cool. That's that's let's have something to eat together. Uh, so let's get some camaraderie going, and they start cheering Kofi up. Uh, oh, they, sorry, they they plan on cheering Kofi up, um, but uh, Kofi talks about how he has the power of positivity and that he will be fine, which which is awesome. And I'll be asked, I'll be sure to ask him uh, about the power of positivity in a couple of days. Uh, so they call in Otis, who comes in from left of screen with a big pancake mix and it looks like a big old batch and oh they're very tempting uh and then they talk about adding uh extra protein so uh, tucky opens the a big protein container like some chocolate flavored protein it was all brown and they just poured that shit into the into the uh into the the bowl otis whisks it very lightly asks them if they want to slip everyone's like nope that looks fucking gross he proceeds to chug that shit and it's all out down his face all across his beard it looked if interesting um <laughs> only because it's like that's a little bit gross uh however i enjoy it because i still quite like heavy machinery <sighs> excuse me so uh, i'm very excited ah killer jumps in he goes these are the answers so the eight teams are the New Day, the Viking Raiders. I don't know the Viking Raiders. Awesome. Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Kurt Ryder and Zach Hawkins. Zach, no, Zach Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. I got them backwards. Uh, the Revival, the OC, Ziggler, uh, Ziggler and Rude, and the B Team. So including both champions, which is cool. Uh, I thought for some reason I thought they weren't involved in it, but then I realized uh, there are many more tag teams. Uh, where's the Usos? I assume they're still suspended. Apparently the Ascension are gone. <laughs> I always bring up the Ascension, but I never see them anymore. Uh, we haven't seen them, haven't seen them in the long ass time. But I don't know what they're doing, and whatever they're doing, not doing well. Next up, we get Kayla Braxton. She's about back having a chat with King Corbin. Uh, see if there's anything that he wants to say about attacking Roman. Uh, he turns around, puts his crown on, and goes, <laughs> and then walks away. Okay. Next up, a match that I gave zero fucks about: Chad Gable. Or his, for some reason, he wants to be known now as Shorty Gable uh, against Curtis Axel of the B Team. Uh, they do show the video package uh, explaining why he has decided to go by the name of Shorty Gable. It hurts because it's stupid. Now, Jem will argue against this. Uh, she's a she's a fan of the whole uh, Shorty storyline. The, sh- the what what they're trying to do here, I guess. I, I'm sure it's just some appreciation for her for her fellow short people, as uh, Jem is a whole five nothing. So she is uh, on the the shorter end of the peoples. So I'm sure she's just, you know standing up with, for her people, um, which is very nice. Uh, let's see. <sighs> match kicks off uh, Curtis does tap um, Chad on the head 
then boss and boss for a while. It does end with an ankle lock by uh, by Chad. You keep running shorty here, Jim. Not going to say it. Uh, the ankle lock on on uh, so an- on the ankle lock by Chad Gable for the win. Uh, the cable then interviews him in the ring. He kind of he delivers a uh, pep talk about how uh, this was the gift that he was given uh, about uh, being short and his self consciousness that comes with that. So for him, this is all about him uh, sort of taking ownership over who he is and having some pride in who he is hence why he's adopted the shorty name uh yeah mate yeah sure all right yeah sure uh <laughs> i just i just can't believe that they're using that as a thing like, i understand that you know yes you should have some pride in, pride in yourself but um oh i guess yeah in, in, in i guess in in mlb the show like my character is called big daddy betson and, like, that's the joke of me being a large dude. So, I guess. I guess. Yeah, it's probably in the same bracket there, but all right, cool. And then he announces that it has been shortened to, in fact, to be Shorty G, which is worse. It's actually worse. Killer in the chat says, what the actual fuck have they, do- have they done to Chad Gable? Seriously, Shorty G, I can accept Shorty Gable, but this is stupid. What What's worse is that he is officially Shorty G now on the website as well. And that name has since been trademarked. So that's not changing anytime soon. Uh, let's see. Let's keep moving forward. Next, we have a horrible uh, uh, Skype conversation with Hulk Hogan about Crown Jewel. <laughs> Don't care. Can't care. Not even going to comment on it. Uh, next up, eight-man tag team match was Heavy Machinery and The New Day versus The Revival and Rudolph. Um, this was fucking awesome. This was an actually really, really awesome match. I dug this a lot. There was just a lot of consistent punching and fighting. There was like hip shaking from the likes of Otis and Big E. Big thumbs up to that one. That made me laugh. Uh, There was a situation where uh, I believe Bobby Roode went to go for the uh, for the glorious DDT, so went to get the, the kick and the lift, um, but uh, Otis just no-sells it completely, and absolutely exceptional. Um, the win does go to uh, the New Day with an up, up, down, down on Scott Dawson. My mum said burpee, pardon me. Um, yeah, so up, up, down, down uh, with an assistant assistance from Heavy Machinery. So uh, I believe, yeah, I believe it may have been... They came in the corner. Big E goes the thing, picks him up, grabs him, and then Xavier taps him straight away. So it was a nice quick three tag. And then, bam, up, up, down, down for the win. McVeigh's very happy because uh, that means New Day may come, cl- may come through with a seven time tag team championship um, as we know the rival are current champions which is even cooler uh, bu- 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 <sighs> excuse me <clears throat> next up tag team match of uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns versus Nakamura and Corbin they are essentially working double duty tonight as per um, the the start of the show. This is as uh, so they announced this match is happening and is going to be the main event for the night. It's very cool. Uh, Kayla d- interviews Daniel Bryan at the back. He talks about how his mindset mindset isn't affected by by being beat up. He goes, "I've been beat up by anyone. I've been beat up by the best of them. I've been beat up by the worst of them. Everyone has beaten me up at some point." Um, he doesn't care about Twitter beef and people calling themselves on. Uh, calling themselves out uh, out or aloud but he cares about his first fight on smackdown since uh moving to fox so this is exciting this is very very cool i love daniel bryan um i do i do certainly i'm starting to for the longest time i didn't quite see it but i am starting to agree and understand with the argument that he is one of the best wrestlers around if not ever uh just because he is absolutely astounding um his promo work is good. His in-ring work is good. Um, even just like the yes chance, all these things he's done in the past. And um, yeah, no, I, I'm I, I am on that train because his heel Daniel Bryan was fantastic. Face Daniel Bryan is awesome as well. Nothing but win for me right now. 
Uh, next, we get Bailey walking backstage in Nile Lee video, but then we get to Miz TV. Uh, he's out in the ring getting ready to rock and roll. We see Bailey uh, enter because it's a it's an interview with Bailey. Uh, new music kicks, very cool. So I've kind of lost the um, the very Iggy Azalea. Ke- uh, no, it's Kesha. Yeah, it's Kesha because Iggy Azalea one is one that's got Carmella sounds a lot like that. So the the um, uh, who did I just say? I was brain farted. The Kesha sounding um, intro. It's now more of a hard rock sort of one, which is cool. I dig it. I personally dig it quite a lot. Uh, however, Sasha Banks is by her side here, which is interesting. Uh, they just they, they mentioned here, which is kind of old news, uh, that Bailey is the first of a women's Grand Slam champion. She's the only person ever to have both Raw, SmackDown, uh, a tag team championship, and the NXT Championship, uh, Women's Championship as well. So across the board, uh, at this stage, uh, she has won it all. Except I think there's an NXT UK Championship, which I guess she hasn't got technically, but maybe that doesn't fit, maybe that doesn't count. I don't know. Maybe, uh, I assume the UK one doesn't, which doesn't count, which is, a, which is a bummer. Hey, what's up, Craig? Which is a bummer, uh, because that says a lot about what they think of NXT UK, so that's a shame. Uh, so they demonstrate a video package of the last couple of weeks of what's going on, and the Miz just asks a simple question. He just asks, "Why?" Uh, Bailey discusses how she doesn't owe the Miz anything. She doesn't owe a response. She doesn't have to explain her actions, which I guess is is guess kind of fair. And you know, she she she's an adult. She can do what she wants. Uh, the Miz then asks her about all the women, uh, the women, the women and the children, everyone that looked up to Bailey as a role model. Uh, and you know what, like, what does that mean for them now? Like by destroying the Bailey buddies, like are they, you know, you've, you've kind of shat and spit in their mouths, um, essentially. Uh... And she goes, a champion doesn't speak. Who are you? Oh, oh, what? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So the, the Miz asks her about those kids and Bailey just doesn't answer and kind of shrugs it off. Uh, then he responds to the champion that doesn't speak. Who are you? Brock Lesnar. Is this your Paul Heyman? While well, pointing at Sasha. Cool little touch there. I enjoyed that. Made me giggle. Uh, and however, the, the Miz just keeps prodding and prodding and prodding and prodding. Um, so the idea of just like, yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Bailey does eventually crack though and talks about how that she gave and gave and gave to to the WWE universe. She gave them nothing but love, support, and whatever. However, all they did was ever take. I guess it's, how the fuck do they get back to you? It's, it's, it's how, that's how this entertainment work, you moron. Um, she talks about how the women's division is 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 lacking its desire and its passion and it's just you know, like she's representing kind of what 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 the the women's division needs. Uh, I missed a part here. They did so. They, so in, in t- during this discussion, she kind of pokes uh, back at Miz and calls him out for being dra- picked in like the fifth round of the draft or whatever, which is fine. Bailey was picked in like the fourth, the third, maybe fourth. Like really early on, so she wasn't gonna pick that much sooner. Like Sasha Banks was, and that's fine. And we I mean, discussed the idea of you know, like, is this why you've done this? Is it to you know to to draw some attention because you felt self conscious? Is that why you cut your hair? Uh, you know, because you know you're always concerned that you'll always be playing second fiddle to Sasha Banks, um, which is kind of the prediction that the the, the Gemini had a couple of weeks ago with the idea that the Bailey has you know. I'm st- where, will we see that turn on Sasha? You know, she's done all these things uh, for Sasha. She's turned against everyone that, that, that loved her because of it. And I do wonder where there will be some backlash towards this at some point. Um, as in, you know, S- S- Bailey has sacrificed everything, um, where Sasha really has sacrificed almost nothing um, in order to, to do this. So the idea is, you know, they work together to both have the championships and. Sasha doesn't have it. Bailey does. So, you know, Bailey's sacrificing. Yes, she's got a belt, but one of those stretches of a what cost where Sasha has sacrificed nothing and has nothing to gain from it. You know, so it's kind of this weird little setup between the two of them. Uh, during this, though, Nikki Cross then does come out and says that the time for talking is done and the time for action is now. So she uh, she's about to run down and uh, and she says you want to give Bailey a hug when she wins. 
Uh, so during all this scuffle, Dana Brooke then comes out and talks about passion and being driven by being underutilized and overlooked. So it's kind of a repeat of the story that we saw last couple months ago, probably I think it was a while back now, with uh, Natalia, like the little story that Dana and Natalia had. Um, but whatever. Uh, then Lacey Evans comes out and struts uh, past everyone. So, because this is this is the six, what they're calling the six pack challenge, uh, where essentially the first woman to get pinfall or submission will win a shot uh, at the championship. So they get a first cont- uh, was it first contender, a contendership match. I don't know. Either way, they're going to get first shot at the belt, which which is pretty cool, pretty handy. So as I mentioned, this is a match between Bailey, uh, sorry, it's between Nikki Cross, Dana Brooke, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, Lacey Evans, and Carmella. That's a pretty good set of women, if I do say so myself. Uh, now, Sasha and Bailey were watching on, which was very, very cool. Incredibly fast match. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I really enjoyed it personally. Um, like I said, I, said I, I always mention that I find the women's division incredibly fascinating, and I do think sometimes they can deliver, uh, if not better, than the men sometimes. And in terms of all the women here, of course, they have something to prove here. This is this is their shot for, their shot for contendership, you know, ahead of uh, this this belt. You know, Lacey wasn't able to successfully get um, the the belt. She had plenty of shots over at on Raw, but this is the first time she's going to have a go at SmackDown. And it would be awesome to you know just right after the draft come across and assert her dominance and show that she was meant to be there, meant to pull come across. Manny Rose and Sonya have not been in uh, title f- picture for a while. I think they may have had a shot a little bit ago, but didn't go too well. Uh, the two of them uh, impressively worked together really well within the match. There was none of this, you know, oh, we're all in it for ourselves sort of thing. They did stick together as a team, which I think is certainly uh, a good, good... It does demonstrate that why they should be within the at least the tag team championship picture. Um, Because even in this circumstance, they are still willing to work together to deliver a result. I don't know what would have gone down to, like, you know, who would have taken the pin if they needed to. But either way, they worked together nonetheless, and it was good. Uh, And Carmella's always just awesome. Uh, But however, the the win did go to Nikki Cross, (coughs) excuse me, um, with a running neck breaker on Mandy Rose. Uh, next up, we did see a... Oh, sorry. Who should come So, Nikki Cross having the win. Awesome. I'm very happy with that. Because one thing we did fail to mention uh, last week, because we didn't know about it at the time. It happened afterwards. They did do uh, some trades between the shows as part of the draft. Uh, SmackDown did trade uh, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss uh, for, quote, future draft picks. Uh, so, apparently, the draft isn't over contrary to the dates being done so i think it's essentially an out for them to bring someone over potentially like bray wyatt i guess to come back if they want to continue that feud over on raw but okay sure um but yeah in terms of who you'd bring over i couldn't tell you but the options there is at some point in the future raw can can request payment and uh take some some superstars over very very cool um let's have a look let's have a look let's have a look uh yes this one was firefly funhouse uh hell in a cell burn down recap video they discuss that the match at uh so they discuss that the fiend is having a universal championship match again against uh uh seth rollins at crown jewel uh the big difference here is their quote uh, essentially saying this match cannot be stopped for any reason. Um, so it is a false count anywhere, no disqualification, can't be stopped for any reason match. All right. Fine. Cool. Uh, yeah, so like the quotes seems a little bit of a kick in the pain. However, by having um, Seth lose, sorry, Seth lose by D, sorry, having the Fiend win by DQ uh, and Seth lose by DQ, that means that the, the Seth has lost all championship advantage, which means that some like whatever the outcome is, it is final. Like if the Fiend happens to win, um, then it's like or you know or even if it ends like can't end in DQ. There's no DQ. 
We will have a definitive champion by the end of that match. In terms of Crown Jewel, I discussed it last week. I'm not sure whether we're going to rec- cover it, in, especially in terms of our regular like pay-per-view uh, show. Um, I will probably watch it and hate it the whole time because I'm a butt. But um, we will not be... I don't think we'll be recovering it. It's up to it's what Jem thinks, I suppose. Because it does fall on a... Th- it's on a Thursday in the US. So it's a Friday for us. Um, so, yeah, it'll be a Friday day or it's like four in the morning or something for us um yeah i'm not gonna i don't think we should probably cover it just because i'm very against um the whole saudi arabia bullshit and the the uh, the matches they put on just destroy like the saudi shows are destroying wwe um but that's it's neither here nor there uh next see we see braun Strowman comes out they demonstrate a video from last week's contract signing uh he's having a match against drew gulak um drew gulak is the former cruiser cruiserweight championship over at 205 live uh so during before the match even gets started drew gulak does get a mic and talks about how he wants to introduce himself properly uh and talks about how the that's in order for Braun to win against Tyson Fury at Crown Jewel, he needs to no longer use the I'm the big guy, get these hands gimmick. He needs to, he needs to play smart, he needs to play hard uh, because Fury is bigger and better than that. It's going to go bad otherwise. Uh, Gulak d- discusses that he has a, power, a PowerPoint slide with 300, sorry, 345 slide PowerPoint presentation where he's going to talk about uh, ways that which Braun can beat uh, Tyson Fury, and as uh, Gulak goes to show off the first slide, Braun just wrecks him, gets in, uh, gets all up in his shit. Does uh, uh, I think he does a lap at one point, and he yells, "Tyson, I hope you're watching!" Before just demonstrating a running power slam uh, for the win over uh, over uh, Gulak. Killer, I love that Gulak uh, brought back his PowerPoints again. He was insufferable with them in 205. Apparently, this is it's, it's, it's sort of his little character that he did about three kind of iterations ago, which is fine. I think if, obviously, if it was that over and that fun at 205, why not bring it here? Uh, I think it, it's certainly unique. No one else is really doing something along those lines. So, credit to him. I'm happy with it. I, I think I thought it made me chuckle. It was very funny. Uh, we see a promo video for 2K20 which we'll discuss about later this week um, because that will be in our hands very, very soon. And finally, the main event, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns uh, against uh, King Corbin and Shinsuke Nakamura with Sami Zayn. Uh, before, so in terms of entrance, Roman Reigns does come in last and before they uh, get the match underway, they do announce that Roman Reigns is now the team captain for uh, Hogan. Uh, ahead of the uh, Hogan versus Flair uh, match at uh, Crown Jewel, which is is fine. So Seth was pulled because of his double duty uh, against the Fiend. Cool. <clears throat> I still I have such an issue with that flare versus thing, so Sami so Zayn does get involved as he always does. Jem mentions here that she loves watching Dan- Daniel Bryan, which I can certainly agree with. Uh the match continuing with Corbin trying to take Reigns out with some stairs. There was a moment ringside where he had uh, Roman on one set of stairs and he had the other set of stairs in his hand. So he's gonna squish his fucking head. And the ref's like, Don't just don't do it, man. Like, don't be a bullshit about it. He's like, oh fine. At least that's fine with it. Um once again, he's th- he stopped threatened with DQ. However, Reigns takes himself and Corbin out with a spear into the timekeeper's area, while Brian picks up uh, picks up the win with a running knee uh, on on uh, Shinsuke, I believe, uh, and it does end with Roman and Daniel Bryan handshaking at the end. Um, our expected outcome there. I kind of would have thought that Daniel Bryan and uh, and Roman would have got the win. Uh, it was overall this episode of Smackdown was pretty cool Um, I didn't hate it by any stretch I enjoyed it I mean there's not a lot like aside from the crown jewel bullshit um, I I liked it I you know I said this apart from the crown jewel stuff the crown jewel stuff sucks and I understand they're pushing it because it's a week away so that'll be fascinating Um, aside from that 
It was cool. Matches were fine. I got a couple laughs. Oh, minimalish backstage stuff, which is awesome, even though I do like the backstage stuff. Um, they kept to it. I, I think it was certainly an improvement over, after the draft. So I'll give it mm, a curtain a bar. I like that. I think I'm going to give it like that. Right down the... Right down there. Um, yeah, I was pretty okay with it. Uh, so in, so in, so in, so in, we don't have it. So let us know what you think of uh, this episode of SmackDown. Comments below, Discord, Twitter, all that sort of stuff. Um, now, there is no dirt sheet this week because I did reach out to Dash and there's not a whole lot of... He's, he's he reached out to all these places and there's not a lot of info out there right now. It's pretty quiet in the wild. Um, so we don't have to deliver anything like that. However, one thing that we didn't discuss last week is that Eric Bischoff has been fired from his role as creative director over on SmackDown. Um, he's now been replaced by Bruce, by uh, a longtime 2IC or assistant or worked alongside Vincent Mann, Bruce Pritchard. Um, now, we should mention that Bruce Pritchard was, uh, Pritchard was one of the guys to help get Bischoff Bischoff in the spot. It's almost in this situation that he's kind of put Bischoff in there. Like, Bischoff is shit. Can I do it? He's like, oh, and then gives it to him. So he's kind of like, he he almost threw, uh, potentially almost threw Bischoff under the bus so he can take the role. So as Killer says in the chat, next week's SmackDown will be interesting to see what happens under Bischoff's new rule. Um, however, uh, sorry, under Pritchard's new rule. However, the thing I do wonder is apparently uh Bischoff didn't have a lot of creative input anyway, aside from like these mild things that he did. Apparently, he spent a lot of time at catering, and he hired that one guy from Sons of, from Sons of Anarchy who fell asleep in the writers' room. Um, it sounds like he didn't really have a mass involvement anyway. So, you know, Vince would come in and rip up SmackDown scripts and write a new one anyway. So, in terms of that setup, it's kind of already changed. And I guess if if Pritchard is given given more power, um, then he might change it in a couple of different ways. Maybe Vince will have a bit more uh, okay. <laughs> might be more okay to have a chat about and plan the show. Because um, having that long-term working relationship with, with Vince, maybe Pritchard knows how to be like, nah, Vince, this might be better. <laughs> But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this show up because I've got. I said I've got to go. I've got a game to play. Um, can't talk about it yet. Comes out. I'll do get some news later in the week. Um, but I just wrapped everything up here. And as I said, we, having the two shows over the week, I want to keep them sort of lesser. One like for, you know about 45 minutes each, best we can. I'm about to hit that mark now. So it's gonna work out perfectly. This was our SmackDown in review show for the young and the wrestlers. It comes out every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on the YouTubes. If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to facebook.com slash group slash the pop culturist. Uh, we ask for, we ask for on uh, Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, however, head over to patreon.com slash the pop culturist. Support us at any dollar value. Get yourself a nice little sneaky link where you come and watch us record the show live like a handful of people are right Right. Now, uh, if you want to support us in a one-soft fashion, head to popculturist.com slash shop. You buy shirts like this, other assorted shit with our logos on it. We are also on a Twitch, twitch.tv slash thepopculturist. Now, if all goes well, tomorrow night, uh, sorry, tonight, as the day that you see this, that is Tuesday, 8 p.m., I should be streaming WWE 2K20. Now, Craig, if you're in the chat, if you want to come join me, you're more than welcome to. I think that would be fun. I also, like, I also love hanging out with Craig. Craig's a good friend of mine spend all the time in the world with him uh and then streams on th there will be no stream this thursday uh because we will be at wwe live on wednesday that pushes our raw recording back a day so yes yeah. so if you if we do see you at well if you spot us at wwe live come say hey should be exciting uh keep an, keep an eye out over at wellplayed.com.au uh as well as uh, on our on our channels here ahead of uh, uh, our interview with Kofi Kingston. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be very cool. Once again, big thank you to Well Played for allowing that to happen. Big thank you to everyone for watching this show tonight. Thank you for downloading it and having giving you a listen. If you like the show, be sure to give it a five star review or a, or a star of choice, a star review of your choosing, as well as a written review. Tell your friends, help get some more downloads because the more st cool stuff we do, uh, the more cool, st the more we get out there, the more st cool stuff we can do. Like interviewing Kofi Kingston and other cool stuff. 
I don't like it. I'm really bad at editing videos. But once again, thank you very much. I'm Ryan Betson. And we'll see you on the next one. Happy wrestling week. The Young and the Wrestlers, the pop culture is WWE podcast is fan support over at Patreon at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Kyle Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti, Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.